Welcome back. I am Jim. Devin Ross and Chase Paget here as well. You know what? Uh, I think it was last week uh, this gentleman announced that he was done with the business. Retiring after 38 years. And I don't know that there's a more legendary news personality in Central Florida than the one and only, the great, you guys give it up, Mr. Todd Ulrich. Yay! Yay! Several bigger legends, but thank you. It's, it's great to be here, and thanks for the invite. How about that, man? It is unbelievable. You know what the crazy thing is, buddy? I've, I've Again, I think most of Central Florida has watched you for many years just completely wreck lives as you showed up at the front door with <laughs> with that camera, <laughs> that camera and some truth. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> but it has been – you look amazing. Uh, you have been one of the more effective personalities in Orlando uh, for many decades. Uh, what – just first things first – Hi, and what led to this decision? Well, I tell you what. First, this has been my dream job. Uh, I've been doing. I've been at Channel Nine for thirty-eight years. I've been in the full-time TV news for forty-four. But Orlando was a, and Channel Nine was a great fit from the very beginning. And then uh, thirty years ago, I started the Consumer Investigations, and I it was, it's been a privilege. And I I was excited every week to connect with our viewers. Uh, we would uh, have dialogue with about two to three hundred every week, uh, helping people, even though they didn't get on the air. And it's by trying to help them that we could identify the stories that we wanted to share with everybody else. So our viewers, our consumers wouldn't make that same mistake. And it really worked for a really long time. And brother, I got to tell you, I think that I think you could do this job and do it well and not have the impact that you have because you're such a likable person and it never seemed malicious, Todd, even though you're going after people who may have been doing some squirrely stuff, it you never came off like a malicious bully news person who was entitled to this, you know, trying to scare people into doing the right thing. You always really kind of went at it with some humanity. Was that, was that a, was that a noted thing? Did you try to do that? Well, I hope so. And it was never about me. It was about the consumer or the group of consumers who were losing money uh, and, and, and they didn't get what they paid for. And we would just show up after these folks wouldn't talk to us to ask some very straightforward questions. And uh, it wasn't about the drama there. It was about getting the answers. So I think that's why it, it, it stayed on that plane. Although Jimmy has said for years that when a business <laughs> saw you show up on their doorstep, <laughs> they were not going to probably be having yeah. a very good day. <laughs> it was like, this is the last guy you want. Exactly. When you, when you look out your window and you see that dude pulling you up. You see Todd Ulrich, you're like, oh. He gets out of the car, I run out of the back. Right, exactly. It's that simple. <laughs> Um, so hey, we just want the answers. That's, that's right. Yeah, yeah, right. I love that. <laughs> Is there one instance that really jumps out to you as kind of like, man, we brought a lot of justice and I, I didn't think that this was going to be the end result. Is there one, uh, I don't even know what to call it, an case. Instant, one case that really jumps out to you to go, we really made an impact on this one? Well, I, one does, and that's Lou Perlman and oh, his wow. trans-savings oh. Ponzi scheme. Because we were the first station, uh, Action 9 was the first one to identify that. And even before he was doing the investment Ponzi scheme, he was doing a modeling scam with Alec Defroy. And we were, had identified that like three or four years before he then came on the scene in Orlando. I mean, they were giving him the key to the city and he was winning all these awards. And it's like, hey, guys, you need to know what's going on behind the scenes here. Right. And uh, again, he was taking promising big returns on these investments. And then when it came, uh, when it was all exposed in the end, $300 million gone from many from investors right here in Central Florida. I mean, wow. one, one of, I mean, and to have it mixed up into pop culture that thick when it was happening yes. made it so, and I'm sure that insulated him in some sense, uh, Todd, because, you know, here you are. You know, the investigative reporter uh, for Channel 9, yeah. very powerful. And then, you know, theoretically, you, you, you perception wise, you look at Lou Perlman, and are like, oh, this guy's helping kids get into the business, blah, blah, blah. It must have been kind of tough to do with that because I'm sure that people it's probably push back. People probably looked at you like you're a little crazy. There was a lot of blowback, both in the community and at times within the station, because he had this national reputation as this star builder within Sync and Backstreet Boys, and allegedly everything he touched turned to gold when, uh, of course, behind the scenes, that's uh, the, the, the boy bands had their own story to tell. Right. But then on the investment side and the modeling scams, uh, he got away with a lot for a long time 
because of his reputation in town. Wow, so, man. When he got taken away, like when he got arrested, did you like mumble to you mumble to yourself bye bye bye? Cuz like, that damn. that has to happen, <laughs> right? You can't miss well, that opportunity. Regret, yeah, with well, one regret I have is we did not get to confront him because of his reputation and because of how I was being held back at, 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 at originally. That changed down the road. But uh, he had some uh, uh, he should have answered questions uh, a lot sooner than he did. Yeah, yeah, man. That's crazy. Todd Ulrich with us, uh, retiring finally, 38 years of uh, hard work here at Channel 9 for sure. You know, I'll, I'll kind of piggyback on that question from Ross. You know, Todd, people don't really like it when you do what you do to them, especially if they've successfully been defrauding people f with, you know, f sure. uh, with money, you know, from money for many, many years. I can only imagine you've had a couple pretty scary instances in your career. Uh, there have been a few, and one was about 15 years ago when I got was contacted by the Osceola County Sheriff's Office because oh. a guy who had been doing an appraisal scam for years down the celebration area, uh, we kind of nailed the scam, exposed it, and got him in trouble. And then he eventually was uh, convicted of fraud. But I got a call from the Sheriff's Office because he was soliciting someone to... Uh, uh, do harm to me. Oh, oh. And, uh, that, that, uh, now, uh, did he ever hire someone? I don't know. But the Osceola Sheriff's Office contacted me and the station because he was soliciting someone to do that. So, so that's that's one that does stick out. I got to ask, <laughs> that's Todd, a... how does like, well, when, when your station finds out something like that, <laughs> I mean, it, it happens in our industry, too. One of my best friends had to actually have security live in her home be, because of a stalker. Oh what, sure. what kind of uh, what kind of steps are taken? Because oh, the manager just says, hey, somebody get Ulrich a stun gun. <laughs> exactly. I mean, because <laughs> in your line of work, I mean, it, it would happen, I would imagine, more often than not. But what, what happens after that? There is a corporate security team that comes in. And they go over some things you can do to protect yourself. They help you protect your home and give you some common sense advice. But it kind of ends there. Right. I mean, you're still, you still you are you know you, you're you're understanding that the kind of work you're doing can really upset some folks. And and we have over the years. <laughs> One of my favorites, like, though. The, my favorite's the wry smile right after he says <laughs> exactly. that. Exactly. My favorites are the uh, scams where like you you park your car at like these rental lots. And then you guys will take your helicopter up and f and follow them as they take the red Corvette out for a joy ride. <laughs> uh, yes, Jeff Deal did that about 15 years ago. And it was a great story, and I think that changed that industry yeah. over here in, in hey. the port in Port Canaveral. Good. Todd, did you ever follow a bad lead? Did you ever kind of get on a story and you just had a gut feeling that there was something there and it just turned out maybe that it, w it wasn't exactly what it was? Well, I mean, there you know, consumers will tell you all kinds of stories. And uh, they get upset and they get ahead of themselves. And generally, we would always have documents. And it wouldn't just be one consumer. There'd be a pattern of complaints. And that's one thing we could do is because we try to respond to everybody. And we would contact all these businesses for these consumers. It wasn't a story on the air. But at over six, seven, eight months, we could see a pattern of complaints. So if we're showing up at that front door or we're, you know, chasing their car somewhere, it's because by that time, it's not just one mistake. It's a pattern of complaints, and that's why we're there for answers. Man. Was, I, the, was there ever a time when you were in, a, in an investigation where it wasn't just uh, as bad as you thought it was, but it ended up uncovering, like, a whole other secret back room of problems? Like, for instance, there's, like, this uh, YouTuber uh, who does, like, the glitter bombs for stolen presents. Yeah. And... Sure. Uh, last year, that whole thing led to like a oh, major criminal ring. I remember seeing that. Like it was a complete. Yeah, it was a ring of this. Like people were stealing. It was stuff on from a whole. It became like an FBI issue. Have you ever had like? Oh my gosh, the mobs involved. This goes to the president. <laughs> well, when we investigate moving companies, and good God, be careful if you're ever hiring a mover in state in Florida without doing your research first. But we certainly did. We'll take one moving company and we'll see how it ties to one in, in uh, Miami and one in New York and one in New Jersey. And it's up and down the East Coast. And uh, good Lord, if, if you hire them and they drive off with your furniture, some of these companies, you will lose thousands of dollars if you even get your furniture back.
Wow. Whoa. Yeah, those are those always scare me. Uh, Todd Ulrich here, uh, retiring from Channel 9 after 38 years. Central Florida Batman. Yeah, just a complete <laughs> badass what he is. Uh, uh, Ross, question? So I, I have to ask, because I'm actually, I'm not the biggest fan of confrontation. And that was sure. a massive part of your job. I want to go back into the time machine and ask you about your first time doing this. I, I, were you uncomfortable or did you go, this is my element? And how much better did you get from the very first time confronting, you know, some some scams? Well, I could I, it's, I'm going to date myself when I talk about the first confrontation because it was VCR repair shops. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, those sons of bitches. Shops where you took your VCR to get it fixed. What and are those? We set up a, a consumer test where we had a VCR that we just took one part out of. And then we took that same VCR to four shops in Central Florida. And of course, only one said there's this one part to replace. All the three other shops ran up the bill, hundreds of dollars. And actually, VCRs did cost that much back then, too. Yeah. But, you know, there, there, there's a sense of outrage when you know that they are deliberately taking advantage of you. That's for me, makes the confrontation easier. I mean, if we've got good questions to ask, I don't mind asking them. Well, Ooh. Todd, this is to back you up on that. Someone just sent us a text to 77031 and said, uh, Todd has so much influence in Central Florida that when a now out of business transmission shop tried to take advantage of my mother, all I had to do was threaten to call Channel 9 News and they shifted gears and fixed what they should have fixed for free. Um, what are your plans for retirement now? What, what are you going to do now that you don't have to be chasing cars and knocking on front doors of businesses? <laughs> Well, I, once a consumer advocate, uh, always a consumer mm -hmm. advocate. So, I mean, there's full-time retirement, but I'm not going to walk away from what I really have a passion for and what I care about. Uh, w what that will be, when, where, how, I don't know the answer to that yet, but I'll be out there in some form. I, I, I really, I, I love the, what, what I did, and, and I hated to walk away from it, but it was time. And now I want to mix retirement and doing good for consumers, too. Let's clear this up. People have said that Martha forced you out. <laughs> <laughs> people have said that. And when I say people have said it, I said it to uh, two people. And then they said it back to me. So I have to say it that way. Uh, I did want to ask. I did want to ask you. Uh, there, there are certain industries that have bad reputations, right? I mean, you you mentioned the uh, the repair shops. Obviously, you know, you have uh, car repair. You have roofing companies, oh, pool yeah. companies. In your career, what industry had the had the most complaints and you had to face the most? Well, uh, car repair would be at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. After that would be home contractors. There's one that I've been working on just the last year that I think is just it's coming to hit homeowners here in Central Florida, and that's door to door solar energy sales. They are convincing people that they can have zero. They can. Uh, Get, eliminate their power bills by power bill and suddenly this program to save you money is going to cost you tens of thousands of dollars and there are some major players out there going door to door selling these solar programs and there are a lot of homeowners that have been hurt and there hasn't been much done to stop them at this point. You know what the crazy thing is? is I just uh, started endorsing a solar company. And one of the things, when that thing came across my door, I said, stop, first things first. I have to meet the owners. I have to know everything about the company. Sure. I have to know everything down to the nuts and bolts of the warehouse uh, before I will talk about them, simply because there's been so much um, fraud in that industry. And especially you know, the door-to-door -door people and taking advantage of the elderly uh, it's absolutely. You know, it's just it's just absolutely it's egregious. It is egregious. Yeah, yeah, and there's 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 good people out there in all of these industries, and it's the bad players that give everyone the bad reputation, and that's why you have to be on guard. You have to find those good guys. That's right. Find that's the right. Good guys, and they're out there. You know, you and you handle the case for somebody else here at the radio station. I know that you worked with uh, Russ Rollins. Uh, and sure his did. father with that whole thing that happened with that, which turned out to be a pretty big scam as well, because that guy had done this to a number of people. What we're talking about is Russ's father had a very collectible old Thunderbird, I think a 57 or something Thunderbird. 57 uh, Chevy, yes. Uh, yeah, and he um, and he got it. Uh, I, he was consigning to sell it through a, a dealership, and it turned out the guy just kind of swindled the thing right out from under it. It was oh. a Chevy. It wasn't the Thunderbird. You're right, it was the Bel Air. 
Bel Air, and it was it was uh, Just Toys was the company because I, I'm I don't mind saying what the company was because we had been doing that story for two to three years, and people like Russ's dad would take classic cars and they would sign a consignment sheet and they would sell the cars, but then they would keep the cash, all of the cash, not just their percentage of the commission. And what what just burns me is that was going on for several years before they were finally shut down. And if you took a look at the business model from the very beginning, you could see the consumers were being scammed. And, and that's, I, I, time and time again, we had this slow reaction in Florida and it uh, ends up costing consumers a whole lot. Yeah. Well, Todd, we're, we're out of time, but I gotta ask you, I mean, if you had one piece of advice to offer Central Florida with all of your travels and seeing people who uh, lead fraudulent lives, how what could what's the single thing you could tell somebody to not be a victim of something like this? If you're approached by the company at the front door, a text, phone call, an email, if they're coming after you, be on alert. Mm -hmm. Ask all the right questions, get two or three estimates. Never go with that company that's coming after you first. Wow, that's Good a great, that's a great piece of advice. Never heard that one Why? before. God, yeah. you, dude, I love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> <No. All right. laughs> well, well, listen, Todd, we, we got to go. We could talk to you all day. Thanks for a little bit of your time. We wish you the very best in retirement. Happy retirement. If you ever need anything from us, reach out. We're an email away. We'd be glad to help as much as we can, buddy. Big round of applause for the yeah. legend, Mr. Todd. Oh, yeah. Of course. Keep yeah. fighting for consumers. Be good, buddy. Good guy. You <laughs> Thanks for your time, man. All right, there he is, Todd. All right, 407-916-1041. Load him up. Trivia.